Anthony, I'm here to glorify the name of our Lord Jesus. My new dawn arrives the demon of this year and it's making louder, speaking louder in my life. I'm here to glorify the name of our God. I'm into the, the machineries, working with machineries, and uh, most of the machineries I work with, any time I work, I pay daily horror tax onto the owner. And I'll be desiring God give me a machine of my own. About two weeks back, I was called that there is an excavator somewhere to, and the owner I want to say, as the news came, there was no, I didn't have the, the amount they were calling because each machine is above 10 million. So, but God of this commission stood for me. As I was looking for finances, Moto hit me on the ground and I got up. I know that the devil is in challenge, but God will make me to be victorious. And today, God delivered that excavator into my hand. Where the finances came, God knows. And that machine is mine today. I give God the glory. Come on, give him a big clap. Your expectations this year must surely come to fulfillment. Praise the Lord. My name is Egede Ruben. I want to give this God all the glory this morning because he's the reason behind all the happenings in my life. I want to give God all the glory because since I left to school, I've never had any bad news from my family. And I also want to give God all the glory for keep me sickness free all through my through this section. I want to give God also all the glory for success in my exam this semester. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Success is your birthright. Release upon me to know what it takes to live well and to live long. Release upon me to know what it takes to live well and to live long. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. You will not die premature. Amen. The number of your days you will fulfill. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Any aspect of your life that ignorance is taking advantage of, today there will be recovery for you. Amen. Say amen like a believer. Amen. No one here will be a victim of the wicked. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Make that amen louder. Amen. Put those hands together for the Lord and please take your seat. Have you brought the oil? I don't want time to, for prayer now. We'll now begin to rush. Living well, living without limits, part one. We're going to take it in a classified series. We're looking at faith, believing, right speaking, right eating, and prophetic blessing. In second service, we look at the word dimension, the vision and dream dimension, giving dimension, and also prophetic blessing. And in the third service, we look at the prayer the service and prophetic blessing dimension. Praise God. If you must live without limit, you must plan it. I've not seen anyone that lived long and lived careless. You want to live long, you must plan it. You must plan your spiritual life you must plan your emotional life. You must plan your mental life. And you must plan your body life. No one desires to live long and live careless. It is not possible. Go and ask people that have crossed 100. 
people that have crossed 80, 90, they tread with caution. They tread with caution. It's only people that want to die quick that are not mindful or careful of how they live. But today, such error will be corrected in your life. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Now we are going to take a look at the spiritual dimension and other aspects of emotional and mental dimension and physical dimension. A life without limits is only possible on the platform of faith. If you must live without limits, living by faith is not optional but a must. It's not optional. Scripture told us that just shall live by his faith. The just shall live by his faith. By your faith. So your faith limit will determine your actual existence. Then if you want to live without limits, growing your faith is not optional. Growing your faith. If you refuse to grow your faith, you will soon be extinct in life. So faith is the master key to unlimited life, unlimited living. And hear this, it is operational in Africa, in Asia, in Europe, in America, in Siberia, and any part of the world you can think about. Why will faith become a vital force of living? Whatever seems to be a threat to life, faith can handle it. Whatever threatens your physical existence, faith can handle it. That is why in Ephesians 6 and verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith whereby you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So if someone is planning to kill you, you can kill the person back. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? If you want you to live short, you make his own short. You cut him off. You cut him off physically. Faith is a killing force. So you don't allow anybody to make you aspire. You aspire the person. So it's a force for living. Take it. If you don't take it, they will take you. If you don't take it, they will take you. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Whereby you shall be able to quench. You know what it means to quench? Eliminate. If a witch tell you you go die, tell the person you will never live to see it. You will die before me. It's just like that man that newly got born again in Ibadan. He was in Ogboni. Confraternity. So he has decamped. And they told him, oh, you have left us. Oh, you have left us, eh? 
we give you seven days to change your mind and come back. If not, you are a dead man. He replied them, In three days, the God of your people will kill all of you. He's not one year old in the faith, oh, so that you will now begin to say he must have been an old Christian. It's a lie. He just got born, but he believed that he can live long. He declared it for them. Three days and seven days, which one is longer? In three days, all of them started dying like a pack of cards. Every one of them that came for that mission, no one survived. Faith is a living force. Faith is a living force that just shall live by his faith. That just shall live by his faith. So faith is the currency for living. It never loses its value. It delivers to you what you desire from the realm of the spirit. So living without faith is living with limits. Living without faith is living in struggle. Living without faith is living in frustration. Living without faith is living in depression. Living without faith is living under satanic attacks. Can you now see why you have an awesome responsibility to yourself, to your family, to bring everyone to the point of understanding the lifestyle of faith? Living by faith doesn't make you live hopeless. Living by faith doesn't make you live pitiable. It brings out the color of destiny. It makes you live the real life full of blessing. Hear me? You can't live by faith and be disconnected from the blessing. It connects you to the blessings of God. Nothing can stop faith from operating because nothing can stop God's word from working. That's why you need faith. So you can place a limit on how far you can live. Faith releases a spiritual force into the spiritual world and delivers its mission. So when you begin to operate faith or begin to live by faith, you live it like a mystery. Natural laws cannot stop what God wants to do in your life. There is something that is unique about faith that makes it an injection for long life. One of them is this. It draws virtues from the power of God to establish your appointed days. There are days appointed for you. You are not permitted to suddenly expire. It brings you into the reality of your days of fulfillment. You are not just suddenly going to expire. You must live your full days. So faith is a vital factor. And as you are growing in faith, you are growing in what we call belief. That word believe is two words. Be and live. Faith makes you be. You can't be what you have, you have not believed. Be, live. So when faith enters, it transforms. You be and you live. If you don't be, you can't live. Be, live. Be, live. You first of all be it, 
because it has entered you, then you now leave it. It's conformable with scripture as a man thinketh in his heart. Faith influences our behavior. Faith influences our behavior because we have been live. You believe something before it becomes a reality in your life. The just shall live by his faith. The just shall live by his faith. Believing is not an occasional assignment. It's a core cause. Everlasting assignment. You keep believing. The more you believe, the more you live. The day you stop believing, you begin to go hopeless. And nothing frustrates faith like hopelessness. Hopelessness disarms God from reaching you. Faith becomes important without hope. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. So the day you stop believing, you disarm faith. You open up for the devil to attack you. The moment you begin to go hopeless, depression is opened up. Oppression is giving way. So you don't reduce your believing God, you increase in believing God. You keep increasing in believing God. You keep believing God. You keep believing God. Blessed is she that believeth, for there shall be. <laughs> Blessed is she that believeth, for there shall be. For there shall be a performance. Long life is a performance. It's the act of God. So you keep believing. Do you know what? As you grow in believing, the atmosphere around you changes. Our belief changes our spiritual and physical atmosphere. Because our belief changes our experience. It changes the things that happen to us. Bad circumstance is a product of bad thinking. Until you change your thinking, you can't change your experience. Bad circumstance is a product of bad feeling. I can't change your feeling. You, only, you have a right into your heart. I don't have a right into your heart. That's why I cannot change how you think. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You are the only one that can change how you think. But if you want to live long, create a better picture. Create a better belief system. Don't dwell in the realm of hopelessness. Don't dwell in the realm of bad feeling. It will give you wrong encounters. We'll talk about that in third service when we get to the realm of joyful living. Do you want to live long? Believe God, you can see more better days. When you believe it, it will give expression in your mouth. My tomorrow will be better than my today. My tomorrow will be more glorious. Though thy beginning be small, my latter end shall greatly increase. Are you hear what I'm saying now? You hear me? You must be hopeful of a better tomorrow before you can see a better tomorrow. What you are not hopeful for, you cannot say. You can't say it. Because you are not hopeful. That's why, out of depression and frustration, you hear people say, man, what is this country turning into self? I'm tired of this life. Life is telling you, me too, I'm tired of you. I want to leave you. A 
and you know the moment you keep announcing i'm tired of this life you are you are already signing out you sign out of life you are already signing out you don't know say no before an angel is an error you're already signing out but scripture says, with long life will i satisfy him with long life will i satisfy him and show him my salvation with long life you can choose your own long life david saw 70 he collected 70 Abraham saw 120. So what you see is what you collect. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Number three is speaking right. Tell your neighbor, speak right. You see this mouth is a trap. Scripture says, hidden in the tongue is the power of life and what? Death. So what is killing people is here, is in their mouth. They just choose to say anything. Evil speaking has been a major challenge in the body of Christ. Most people speak about things they don't know about and things that they cannot explain. That is why it is wiser for you to choose what to say than to say what you choose. It's wiser to choose what to say than for you to say what to choose. My mentor said, evil words can cut deeply than the sword. That's why you must be careful what you say. It is wisdom to talk less. Scripture told us, a fool, even when he keeps quiet, is regarded as a wise man. So in the use of word, quality is important than quantity. Mind what you say. Evil speaking kills faster. You die slowly. You may not know what is happening to you. You just open your mouth and say anything. So if you don't watch your mouth, your mouth will help to kill you quick. Many mouths are evil broadcasters. Whether a man is good or a woman is bad, you have no right to speak against them. You that is speaking evil about people, check your life first. I was watching one video Pastor Antia sent it on Facebook. Ben Hinn was preaching in that message. He said, Kenneth Copeland flew to Australia to go and preach and he fell sick. And he was asking God, Lord, why am I sick? And God said, you used your mouth against Ben Hinn. Go and ask him for forgiveness. Kenneth Copeland did not waste time. He just fly straight. Go and meet him. He said, Benny, I'm sorry I spoke against you in one of my meetings and I felt sick. Please forgive me. And he said, wait a minute, why will you do that? He said, if you don't forgive me, God will not heal me. He just embraced him. If you're on my Facebook, you will see it. 
I watched the video complete. You know, it's easy to talk. <laughs> talk is cheap. It's easy to talk. Now this one is prophet, prophet. Oh. And God is still reacting. How much more? Member, pastor. <laughs> prophet, prophet. God is reacting. That's why I have noticed Papa. He really talk about another prophet. I, I learned that one. In fact, in all our meeting, he's sounding it. How much more? Member, pastor. Did you know that members tear their pastor faster? Tear their pastor, tear their pastor's wife, tear their everything. They are tearing. And he want to be blessed. He said, Benny, pray for me. Forgive me. And he was humbled. When you go back, watch the video again. Watch the video. He that must see more better days must keep his mouth, his tongue from speaking what? Die. Short life is a product of evil speaking. Maybe you are in church now and they have given you assignment against pastor. Keep on, oh. Keep on keeping on. You are increasing your bad days. I remember a group of pastors, they were talking about my mentor. Immediately I came in, they kept quiet. I told them, but I heard you were talking about my I said, I warn you for the last time. They were my seniors. So if I hear any of you talk about my mentor again, I will fight you. I, Pastor Tony, will fight you. After that, they started asking me, why did I react that way? I said, there are some things I've learned which you don't know. The reason why we see many people doing badly and they are increasing their bad days, their mouth is killing them. And nothing kills faster like the mouth. With your mouth, you can buy that. Something happened in 2000, and is it 13 or 12 or 14? A woman was busy speaking against me in Port Harcourt. Busy. I don't know what happened to her. She fainted. She almost died. My other sister called me. He said, something happened now. I said, what happened? He said, this woman was speaking against her. I said, I don't know her. You are the one that know her. He said, pray for her. If not, something evil is about to happen. I just prayed for her. But I asked her later, what did she do? She said, she was busy tearing you with her mouth. I just laughed. I said, the ministry of evil speaking now today. They start when Jesus came. They have been there. They have been there. Are you hear what I'm saying now? Please, I beg you. Some members are not doing well. They are not living well because their mouth is killing them. They will leave, Pastor. They will begin to tear members. Tear them. So my evil reporters in church. They keep daily updates. They are giving daily updates of your condition. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? They are in church. I'm even looking at their faces. <laughs> but hear me? You are increasing your evil days. Don't forget, whatever you are doing, you are also buying for your children. That's one thing you don't know. After cutting somebody down, you will now live long. For where? Which law? Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. If you sow to the flesh, you shall of the flesh reap corruption. 
If you also sow to the spirit, you shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. So anything you are sowing now, you are only maturing. You are increasing. In fact, you are making your own happen faster. So be careful. Be careful. There is nothing that have caught people's lives shorter than this one. Mad people eat junk food. They have not died. They don't go for checkup. I won't forget one pastor very close to Papa. He took advantage of it. He began to tear Papa. Tear Papa, tear Papa, tear. He was doing it. Papa didn't even know. It was when his calamity started. When his calamity started, he started confessing. Or then it was already late. Because God will warn you. He will warn you over and over. It will get to a point. This tenth time have I warned you. When you cross the tenth time, you have crossed the line. Yes, he's out of the ministry now. He has gone back to his secular job that he left since 1980 something. Because his mouth did not agree him to rest. Hear me. There is no way you will have an evil speaker as a friend that you will not become an evil speaker. Because this thing is contagious. Speaking right is contagious. Also, speaking evil is contagious. Before you begin to speak right, someone will bring you to the point of speaking right. Likewise, before you begin to speak evil, someone will bring you into the class of speaking evil. What are the consequences of evil speaking? It stops your favor. It increases your bad days and your bad life. It brings you to the frequency of unanswered prayer. So be careful. It blocks the heaven against you. And Psalm 140 verse 11, he said, The person shall not be established on the earth. He said, Let not an evil speaker be established. Meaning he cannot live long. Evil shall haunt the violent man and overthrow him. You know, we see many things in church. Someone can be in church now. He can be sending WhatsApp message about you. In church. I'm pastor now, so I've seen many things. So when I'm saying it, I'm saying it with detailed facts. But you know, we just keep quiet about you because we know where you are ending. Such people can never end well. And they can never see good. It's not a cause. They are buying it with their hand. So keep on. Keep on keeping on. You are already defining your short life. It's a programming of the devil to cut the plan of God short. And you know, the devil is too smart. When he spots a glorious future, a glorious life, he will begin to do things that will make it never to come to pass. Never. And funny enough, because you are not wise, you begin to cooperate with the devil. Last year, something happened. I went to see Bishop Abiy. Favor was coming from Lagos. So, he came into Abuja and said, okay, meet me in Goshen. So he now sent me a message that he would like Bishop to also pray for him. He made like told Bishop. He laughed. He said, look at me in my eye. I looked at him. Is he a good person? I said, yes, sir. He said, are you sure? Can you say this again? I said, yes, sir. I said, I proved him over years. Over years. He said, the reason why I'm asking you don't hang around any person that will make your future blink. 
So if you see me react against people, it's not uh, over righteous. There are some people that will contaminate what God wants to do in your life. That's why with speed I can cut anybody off. I, I rather remain alone and follow my prophet and arrive at where God has in mind for me than to be hanging around fools. People whose head are not correct. That's why the moment I spot you, <laughs> I will give you the first warning. I will now set all my spiritual antennas around you. So that the next thing I just do is like, Poo! go your way. You are not designed to escort me in destiny. We met by privilege. And if you want to take it for a disadvantage, I give you a back kick. I go my way. Is it by force? Love is a must. Friendship is a choice. Is somebody learning something? We have looked at um, three now. The next one is right eating. Some people will have problem here. <laughs> Am I saying something? Yes, Do you know, let me say this. Some people delay in going to urinate. If you delay in going to urinate, raise your hand. Don't be ashamed. Raise your hand. I want to say something. Good. Do you know what you are doing? You are trying to open a door for kidney failure. Anytime urine stays longer, <laughs> it's creating a deposit in your bladder. Your urine, it smells more of, more of amino acids. Are you wrong saying now? Every day the body is carrying toxins. Every day the body is carrying toxins. So the moment you sense that you need to urinate, even if you are in the vehicle, tell the vehicle, don't say when I get to Abuja. Abuja is almost three hours. When I get to, I will hold it. I will hold it tight. <laughs> you are wrong. If I'm on, the, if I'm on the journey now, if you driver stop, look for any spot. I want to urinate. There's no status in that one. Are you here? One say that. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Huh? Yeah. Uh, don't say that uh, I, will, I will hold it to that so that they won't see me that I'm urinating. If they see Yunko. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. I've said it before. I'd like to repeat it again. The first thing you do every morning after brushing your mouth, drink water. What did I say? Drink water. Drink water. Why am I saying you should drink water? As you take water, it will move fast to your system. It will gather, it will send out all the toxins. That's why if you go to the hospital, if they want to do urine tests, they will ask you for the first urine that came out in the morning. They know why they say so. Because that one will show the true picture of what is moving in your system. First thing in the morning, somebody saw me last month. He said, You have not changed you. The same way we saw you 2007, 2008, that's how you are. I say, Change go where? You want me to be fatter and bigger? I say, No. This is how I will be when I become 60. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Huh? As you are seeing me now, that's if you are still alive. Say, I will be alive. Say it again, I will be alive. Say it again, I will be alive. Heaven has heard you. You will not die before your time. This I will be when I'm 70. You better say amen. 
Because as you are saying, man, that's how your own two will be. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? First thing in the morning, take water. Number two, how many of us drink Coke? Raise your hand, don't be afraid. Every bottle of Coke you take, you have taken eight cubes of sugar. Did you hear what I said? Some people feel it's a sign of eating well that you are eating and a bottle of Coke is by the side. It's a sign of poverty. There is what we call eating intelligence. I will tell you that one now. Just wait. So when you take three Cokes per day, some people even take five per day. Yes, I'm saying the truth. Some people take They feel that taking Coke is better than taking water. No! You are dying slowly. Five bottles of Coke multiplied by eight. Forty cubes of sugar. So if you take it like that in a, in a week, <laughs> danger deal. That's why you see some people suddenly develop high blood pressure. You are just getting your system choked. Just wait. Hear me? The moment you cross 21, 22, 23, you don't need too much sugar. Except you are doing plenty brain work. Because the brain needs more sugar. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? But for you to take such please switch over to fruits are you hearing me now so of you to be because excess sugar is converted to what excess sugar is converted to what fat that's converted to fat that's why you see some people or rubber or rubber keyboard they are just growing fat everywhere uh, grow, growing fat is not a sign that you are eating well are you hearing what I'm saying now? It's a sign that you are aging fast. You are aging. If I tell you my age now, some of you will be, will be shouting. Aah! Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Now, how old are you? <laughs> eh? Sit down. Stop eating blood meat. Someone will ask me why. Blood meat is meant for children now. They need it. They need that protein. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Now maybe your level has not reached of you have not reached the level of buying cow tea. But I mean you can buy shaki. Two of us? Roundabout. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Please, I'm, I'm saying something now. It's very, very important. Because if you keep accumulating fat, do you know what you will do? You will get to a point, you will be choking your blood vessels. When you are breathing, you will be doing like, ah, ah, ah. everywhere is choking with fat. So the, the system is under pressure. Pastor Madawa, you are going to do a head talk very soon. Our people need it too. Because God has given you a glorious future. You need a healthy body to arrive at it. That's why if you don't have dream for your head, be careful. Be careful. Another reason why I say you should stop drinking Coke. Coke is acidic. It kills all the hydrochloric acid in your system. It burns it. It keeps burning it, burning it, burning it, burning it. Some people just be swallowing with reckless abandon. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? If I take malt, know that I have been really exhausted. So I need quick sucrose. I just take it. That's why, no matter the quantity that people bring, as it's coming, it's going out. As it's coming, it's going out.
We went for a pastor's get together one time. They brought fried rice, salad, jello fries, fried goat meat, fried fish, pepper soup, juice, chivita, all manner, mango juice. One pastor beside me, the man was very angry with the food, man. <laughs> so, do you know what he did? He said, Tone, this is a big honor. I said, chop on, man. <laughs> do you know what he did? He first of all descended on the pepper soup. Man, that pepper soup carry odor. The thing is attractive. So, he blasted the pepper soup. He didn't waste time, he said. Even though they have uh, brought the one we are going to carry on, let's uh, descend on this jello fries and salad. But I remembered that in my teaching, that combination does not go together. You can't take pepper soup and take salad and rice. Man, you go porridge. I tell you true. <laughs> so, after taking the pepper soup, I just took water. He said, Tony, what's happening now? Are you, are you angry with anybody? I said, I'm just okay. I'm just okay. So, as she finished this thing, he landed on this one. He carried mango juice. <laughs> Guess what happened? The following day, he did not stay in the service. He was running to toilets. Every 20 minutes, pia, I don't go. So to the point that after the three services, my boss asked me what happened to him. I said, sir, he saw the way he was eating yesterday. The food has dealt with him. You know, some people eat as if there is no tomorrow. Man, let's eat this one we are seeing today. Nobody knows what tomorrow looks like. <laughs> but hear this. After the thing has dealt with him, we now called one of our senior metro and they now just brought a talazon and a tetracycline. Say, take and be cooling down first. So after the whole incident, he asked me, Tony, why didn't you eat? Why didn't you eat? I told him that combination they, they go together. You either take this one and forget the other one. But you know, that's what some people do. Some people even go to a question now with waterproof bag. <laughs> Hear me? It's not a sign of revenge, it's a sign of quick death. Food can kill. <laughs> So please be careful. Too much. Do you know that too much of food brings about mental laziness? Oh, you don't know? Too much eating brings about mental... You will be sleeping like all day. Be careful. Too much food is not good. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Too much food is not good. Too much food is not good. I spend more on fruits than eating food. It's not that there's no food in the house. You must know your therapy so that you can live long. Can a Copeland at 86, 82, is still driving his jet? Can you dare it? Some people, yeah, if they put you inside the plane, you won't sleep. <laughs> but at 82, 82 is still strong. Strong. It's still bouncing. Long life is a heritage. You must be committed to see it long. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? I'm going to be eating junk. Some of the fruits we see, we, we, we look at them as if it's Oyibo food. Which Oyibo food? That's the wisdom they are using. Many of them are living stronger. The last one. Exercise is not only when you are pregnant. What did I say? Scripture says bodily exercise profited little. 
it has profit. At times, take a walk. Take a walk. Take a walk. Even if you are shy in doing it outside, come and be going around the church. We will know that you are doing exercise, not that you are praying. No? Just be walking around. Are you around saying now? Uh -huh. At times, you can even buy the video and put and be following them and be they say, raise one leg up. Just be doing it. Are you around saying now? Huh? You may not know what you are doing. You are keeping your system okay. When your system is redundant, man, they will soon pack up. Because anything that is not in use will die. Oh, you don't know? That's why you still see old men in... Do you know that in Germany, in Spain, in France, it's not that they don't have money to buy fuel, oh, but you see them driving bicycle. You see them driving bicycle. If God has blessed you, and you have money to go to swimming pool, go to swimming pool. Not that you go and begin to do a spot dive out before you go and carry your head and knock on the teeth. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Because swimming pool exercise affects all the parts of the body. So as God is blessing you in your dream house, be thinking of swimming pool. Who is saying amen? God will give it to you. You better say amen. amen. Then born you born poverty. No. Uh -huh. So think of it. You will get it. Amen. I say you will get it. Amen. It's not luxury. It's part of the things that keep them longer. Are you around saying now? Keep exercising your body. Too much of drinking wine is not good. You are laughing. What did I say? Too much of it is not good. I have them, but I'm not addicted to them. Maybe once in a month. But some people every week they are drinking wine. See what you go carry. Pregnant man. You become what? Pregnant man. A tummy will be growing larger. It's not a sign that you have money. It's a sign that your head is not yet correct. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? That's why when they, uh, the wine they accumulate. I look for someone that is about to do wedding. I just pack and give them. Carry, carry, go and do your ceremony. In the house now, there are cartons of wine. Someone is doing wedding, and I know of him. I just pack the thing and give him. I say, John and uh, one sister. Pack the thing and give them. What are you using it for? You come and be swallowing wine as if you are drinking pure water. It's not good. That's why I see some of our pastors, they are already having pot belly. Lastly, eating late is bad. Some people don't know that one. Do you know some people still eat around 11, 12 o'clock? They enter the kitchen, I'm looking for, my mouth needs to be busy. My mouth needs to be busy. It's a lie. There is a time when your mouth should not be busy. The moment it is 8, 9, stop. Anytime my wife doesn't cook quick, anytime she doesn't cook quick, I say, what fruit is available there? Give it to me. I'm not, I don't want to waste time. I'm not angry with you. I know you are overloaded with plenty. Well, just give me what is available. Let me eat. If it's so some people, they'll find a face. Do you know I'm the man of this house? Be careful, though. It's a sign too that your head is not correct. Eating late is bad. Once it crosses nine, please look for anything available and eat and sleep. Don't go at me waiting till ten o'clock. Some see it's till twelve, one o'clock. 
is bad. At that time, your system should be resting, not to be under fresh pressure. If you keep eating, you are reducing the half life of your system. Please be careful. Are you wrong? Say now. How many of us eat pig meat? Raise your hand. Don't be ashamed. I want to say something that will help you. Please, from today, no more. Do you know why I say so? Pig meat takes how many hours to digest? Eh? Is it? No, it's not six hours. Who told you? Eight hours. It takes eight hours to digest pig meat. So stop. You eat it in the morning, eat it in the afternoon, eat it in the night. You carry over to the next day. I hope you are hearing me now. I hope someone is hearing me now. Let me see another one. How many of us like eating fried egg? Clap for yourself. Do you know what? Egg is meant for children. The moment you cross 21, maybe once in a week, how often do we eat fried egg? At times, at times once in a month. Yes, so at times twice in a month. Rarely. But there is no week we don't buy up to 10 to 15 crates of egg. I don't know. I don't. But some people would fry three for me there. <laughs> it's not a sign of arrival. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? <laughs> I know some people are not happy with me. You better be happy with me. Oh. Praise God. And lastly, avoid anger. Be angry, but sin not. Let's take a look at two scriptures. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 9 and Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 17. Be not hasty in the spirit to be angry. For anger rested in the bosom of what? Now look at 17. Be not over wicked. Be not much wicked. Be not over much wicked. Neither be thou foolish. Why shouldest thou die before that time? And Papa said, anger dwells in the bosom of fools. Meaning you may die before your time. Anger can kill you. I may be angry with you. I just push it away quick, quick. It's not a good heritage. If the person is a channel of offense for you, I avoid you like a plague. I avoid you like Satan. I want my mind to be free. If my mind is not free, I can't climb this altar. Because I can't hear God. What will I hear him say? Anger almost made Moses to miss the promised land. If not for divine intervention. Hear me? Anger also has bodily consequences. When you become angry to a bad end, it will grow to irritation. When you become angry to a bad end, it will create what we call bitter blood. Your blood becomes poison. From there, you begin to grow offensive body odor. So if somebody is close to you now and he has offensive body odor, I might say something to somebody. <laughs> Praise God. Anger dwells in the bosom of fools. 
why must I die before my time? You will not die before your time. Some people can be angry to a point that eh, they will be thinking of death. No, you will not die. I say you will not die. At every moment, be excited. Be happy. Tell your neighbor, be happy. Rise up to your feet. Please put the oil right now. From all the things that have been mentioned, I'd like you to lift up your voice and pray for yourself. Doubt reduces life. Hopelessness cuts short life. Evil speaking, more it reduces life. I want you to say something. Lord, forgive me. Heal me for doubting you, for not believing you, for not trusting you. Lord, heal me. In the name of Jesus Christ, lift up your voice and pray right now. Don't play with this prayer. Pray. If you have used your mouth terribly against any member, against anyone, ask God to forgive you. Ask God to heal you. In the name of Jesus, any careless word, any evil word that must have gone out of my mouth. Lord, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. In the name of Jesus. Lord, have mercy on me. I ask for your forgiveness. If I have spoken against any of your servants, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. If I have spoken against any of your servants unknowingly, Lord, have mercy on me. Forgive me in the name of Jesus Christ. Any form of anger, Lord, help me. Deliver me from anger. Deliver me from bitterness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Deliver me from wrong eating. Deliver me from wrong eating. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, deliver me from wrong eating. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. All eyes closed, all heads bow. You are here, you are not born again. But you want to make it right with Jesus so that he can be well with you. Wherever you are, inside and outside, put your right hand on your chest and say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come unto you today. I know that I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. I reject sin. I reject Satan. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. If you pray that prayer with me, wherever you are, just come quickly. I want to pray with you right now. Put your hands together for Jesus. If you are coming, come quickly. God bless you. You don't need to be ashamed. This is the best decision anyone can ever take. This is the best decision anyone can ever take. God bless you. Come